Hello everyone, let's install the Big Tree Tech EBB36 and get CAN bus running on our printer. I've got a Core XY printer, in this case a Voron 2.4, that normally has a mass of cables on both the X and Y axis. I had decided to try and make a change to simplify the wiring of my printer by moving the CAN bus and getting rid of the mass of wires and replacing it with just four wires. In this video, I'll show you how it's done, and there'll be a follow-up video shortly with tips and tricks. The EBB36 is uh, a really nice small circuit board. Uh, it'll fit nicely behind most stepper motors, in this case the extruder. Uh, it has a 2209 driver on board along with its own CPU. This is its own dedicated MCU. So you'll actually be installing a second MCU in your printer. It comes as a, frankly, a really nice kit. Uh, it's got most everything you need. <laughs> and uh, as you can see here, um, it's got all the crimp on pins needed for most of the connectors. Um, it includes the connectors itself, jumpers, here you can see the uh, brass uh, mounts, uh, which are really nice, really sturdy, high quality. And here we can see some of the connectors. You will need to supply your own DuPont connectors uh, to complete installation. The kit does not come with DuPont connectors, so make sure you get some of those. It comes with the two screws that fit nicely on the mounting posts, as well as cooling fins for the 2209. I wasn't able to use this due to the way I was mounting it. There simply wasn't space. Uh, but it turns out most people, as long as they're not running the current too high, like let's say 0 0.3, 0 0.35, don't really need it. You will need to come up with your own mount. Uh, this was one I initially used, and be sure to check the tips at the end where I change it. And uh, as you can see here, this mounts quite nicely. It mounts behind the extruder motor. And on the top here, it's got a place for you to attach an umbilical cord as well. And um, uh, I ended up changing this one because it wasn't a great match for my umbilical cord. You also need a way to connect it to your Pi. In this case, I used a can hat. I know you can connect this via USB uh, controller boards as well, but in my case, I have a lot of experience with hats on my Pi. I love them. They simply plug in the pins, and then you can normally plug in anything else that you have plugged in using those GPIO pins on top of it, and it normally just works. Again, check a little later in the video. It didn't quite work out that way for me, but this allows for a really nice compact installation and uh, it worked great. CAN bus requires four wires, two for power and two for the signal. This isn't the ideal way to do it. There is umbilical wire out there and available, but I had some old Cat5 cable Normally, it's only good to about 70 degrees, but that's the sleeve. It turns out the inner cabling is twisted, which is great for CAN bus. It's polyethylene, which is incredibly durable and tough. And uh, the inner cables are actually good to 90 degrees Celsius. So I decided to use this as a cable. I may change this out later for proper umbilical cable. I also wanted support, so I used a, a six millimeter outside diameter, four millimeter inside diameter PTFE tubing. I would have preferred something a little bit thinner, but it works. It's very durable, friction free, can withstand the heat, and it was a really nice path to feed the wiring through. And uh, it really supports itself, so you don't need any tie wraps or anything like that. Um, and it was, as you can see, pretty easy to insert. Uh, I was going to, I am, I did install a 60 watt nozzle heater. Um, between that and the motor and everything else, I wasn't quite sure the amperage. And so although you only normally need four wires, 
I doubled up on two of them because the wire gauge on Cat5 cabling is good for about three and a half amps uh, in the temperatures that this will likely be running. And so just to be safety, safe, I ran a second pair of wires so I can double up, um, which would give me seven amps under the heat maximum. And uh, the EBB36 can actually draw up to six amps. You probably don't need the extra cables. You will need to terminate that. Obviously, uh, here you can see I've added the connectors. Um, and again, uh, two are wire and two are signal. I had a hard time uh, reading the diagram uh, that came with the EBB36. It was in a shade of yellow that I just could not deal with. And uh, I actually made a mistake with my connections initially. And so let me show you the proper way to wire this. So as I mentioned earlier, I don't know if it's me, but I just could not read this um, or at least read it clearly. And uh, I made a mistake when wiring this and fried the card. And let me show you what that looks like. And here you can see, if you look closely in the upper left, there's a capacitor there where the lid is gone and it's unwrapping itself. And the card is covered with whatever mess came from inside that capacitor. So be careful with the voltage. This was fried. I ended up buying a second one. There is a CAN bus uh, subgroup on Discord in the Voron channel. Uh, that actually led me to this image, uh, which is what I used for wiring the second time, and pay very, very close attention to the voltage in and the ground, or the negative here, and of course the can high and the can low. Now we install the CAN bus controller hat. Here you can see I've got the Pi powered by the Spider controller board, and I tried it, this doesn't work, not with the hat, although it seems like it ought to. So disconnect that, and then we insert the hat onto the pins. And if your Pi was powered by your MCU, you're going to have to add the additional power supply uh, that connects to the Pi via a USB-C cable to power it properly. Our next step is to actually enable the CAN bus so we can complete the programming of the EBB36. So in the, in the notes above for this video, I posted a link for how to get to this uh, GitHub page um, that was created by Mazur that goes into detail about how you set up uh, the CAN bus itself and enable it on the Pi as well as how you properly program the EBB36. I'm copying pasting here as I go step by step, and I am actually connecting to the Pi via the shell. So I've already SSH'd into the Pi. Here's the shell. And uh, I'm following the directions, and what I'm doing now is going into the Raspberry Pi configuration utility, where we're going to enable um, the interface for the WaveShare Pi hat. And simply go into Interface Options, and uh, go in to SPI, and I want that enabled. We need that. Um, hit OK, and again, I'm just following Mazur's instructions here, and I'm going in just to be sure, and uh, also uh, enabling the serial port, so we can log in via that if we needed. I'm not sure this is 100% necessary, but hey, it's low effort. <laughs> and then once we've done that, we hit OK. And then you can hit finish and once that's done you need to reboot your Pi for these to take effect and so here I've simply rebooted 
So the next step here in Mazer's directions is to check the serial configuration file of the Pi. And again, I'm simply following, copying, and pasting. So here I'm in the command line shell of the Pi again, and I simply pasted in uh, the nano uh, command line.txt file to edit it in nano. Make sure you are a super user. And I'm just going through here checking uh, to make sure this is okay. Um, I copied and pasted this in the file as well. Uh, assuming all is well, save and exit. And then the next step in Mazer's documentation is uh, for us to go and um, modify the uh, config.txt file. And here we open it in nano again as super user. And then scroll down to the section labeled all. It should be at the bottom of the file. And then simply paste the text from Mazer's documentation. Now, one thing you need to pay attention here, depending on the version of the WaveShare card that you have, you see where it says DT overlay and looking through the string, it says oscillator um, set to 120, uh, 12 megahertz. Make sure you look at the crystal on your WaveShare card. It may have an eight megahertz or it may have a 12. Uh, make sure you put the right value in here. Mine is one of the newer ones. It's highly likely, unlikely you'd get anything else. And um, that's what I set it to. And then hit save or write and then exit. And then following Mazer's documentation, I'm pasting this line in and uh, we are creating this file. And again, making sure you're sudo or super user. And all I'm doing here is copying the text um, that's in Mazer's documentation into this file. Notice the bit rate here is set to 250,000. We are going to use this exact same bit rate um, when we program uh, the EBB36. If you want to, you can up this. Some people recommend uh, 500,000 or higher. I used 250,000, it worked fine. So hit save and exit. And then reboot. Once you've rebooted, you can type ifconfig space can zero, and you should see something like this that shows you your CAN bus is running. Next, we install the bootloader for the EBB36 CD tilde backslash to go to the root and again copying all of this from Mazer's instructions we do uh, the git clone to get the can boot software and it clones and then we go into the can boot directory and once in the can boot directory we run the uh, the menu config program. Then you need to go in and select the correct processor model. And again, you can pull this off uh, the instructions or you can actually look on the CPU itself. And then we go in and select the communication interface for our CAN bus. And then if you remember, I actually set the CAN bus speed previously to 250,000, not 500,000. And so I'm going to change that. They have to match or the two won't be able to communicate. and then simply uh, save and exit. And then we run make and wait till that completes. It'll take a little bit of time.
And now that that's complete, we change directories. In this particular case, the directory that was set up in the instructions didn't quite work for me. And uh, so you can see here, I'm digging around a little bit, trying to find it, but it turns out it's at tilde clipper out, um, or I guess another way is home clipper out. And that is where the correct files were that I required. And then execute make clean uh, to get ready for the new make or the new build. Next, you plug in the USB-C cable to power this for programming purposes, and then plug the other end of the USB-C cable into your Raspberry Pi uh, or whatever PC you intend to use to choose this, but I'm using the Pi. For programming mode, make sure you insert this jumper on these two pins. It is an absolute requirement. Plug the USB cable into your Raspberry Pi, and you should see the little LED light up. We've got power. And to make sure you've got your jumper, um, so it is in programming mode, and then what we're going to have to do is we're going to hit the boot button and the reset button to get this thing in the mode to reprogram. And I uh, had a hard time with the positioning here, but here you can see I'm pushing the two buttons, and uh, there's really no indicator here. Um, I kind of wish LED blinked or something to let you know what was going on. Um, but anyway, I push these two and then it's, I, uh, I let go of the reset button, I let go of the boot button, and it's now in programming mode. Getting back to the command line shell of the Pi, uh, the first thing we'll do here is do an LS USB, and here we can see the STM uh, microelectronics device in DFU mode. That means we are properly set up and configured uh, to load, uh, to set up the bootloader on the EBB36, and then pay close attention to this ID. Most likely it'll be the exact same ID number I have here, but pay attention just in case it's not. Um, you'll either want to write that down or be prepared to copy and paste that ID just in case it's different from what comes next. So I'm pasting the next line from the Mazer instructions and just looking at this, glancing at it really quick, all looks fine. And so uh, notice the leave dash D the 0483 colon, the rest of that number matches what we had before. I execute, I get the error at the end on the download get status, but ignore it. Um, file downloaded successfully means it was properly loaded onto uh, the EBB36. So power off the EBB36 by unplugging the USB cable and then make sure you pull off the jumper that set it into DFU mode so we could program it uh, with the DFU bootloader. So now we install Clipper onto the EBB36. So we start off by connecting the uh, CAN bus high and the CAN bus low cables to the CAN bus hat. Uh, make sure these are correct <laughs> based on how you put your connector together um, and how you intended to plug into the EBB36. And then the other two connectors um, or the other wires that you've got set up, um, we're going to hook them up to negative and positive power. Uh, this is going to be uh, onto the 24 volt lines, um, which means it's actually connecting to the power supply. And here we can see how we've got it all connected and in the uh, PTFE tubing. And, uh, and then we'll take this and plug it into the EBB36, which means it will now be powered. If you have a 1.1 or a 1.0 version of the EBB36, 
you want to be real careful here because it will start to heat up um, the uh, uh, nozzle heater if you happen to have it attached. On the 1.2 version, it's not a problem. Um, but anyway, here I am. I've plugged it in, and we're getting ready for the next stage of installing Clipper. Now that we're all powered up, it's uh, you SSH again into the Pi. And again, we're following the next steps in Mazer's instructions. Here, I'm just copying and pasting this to just check and see, was a CAN bus UUID found? And indeed it was. So we're connected, uh, we're live, uh, we're ready to download Clipper onto uh, the EBB36. And so here I'm changing into the Clipper directory. And then we're going to enter the menu config or make menu config. And uh, we're going to enable the extra low level configuration options. We're setting the microcontroller architecture and we will set the processor model if it's incorrect. And we aren't actually communicating via USB, we're actually communicating on CAN bus. So we're setting that appropriately. Then we have to adjust the CAN bus speed because we have it set at 250,000, not 500,000. Uh, that was a choice I made earlier. Of course, you can choose to use 500,000. At some point in the future, I'll probably go back and reflash this. And then save the configuration and exit. And we'll make clean and then we'll do a make. And this is building Clipper for the EBB36, which we are going to download. And here it says creating hex file that completed. And now I'm pasting from the Mazer documentation um, again, just to check to make sure that uh, we can find our CAN bus device, the EBV36, and we do. And here I'm pasting again. And where it says my UUID, we need to copy that CAN bus UUID into this position. And make sure it's correct. This happened to me several times where sometimes some garbage came over with it. And check one more time to make sure the IDs match, the UUIDs match. Then hit enter. And now it's flashing Clipper onto the EBB36. And can flash is a success. And here I'm testing one last time. And it application clipper was found on the UUID. We are successful. Now that we have all the software installed, it's time to actually install the CAN bus card on the printer. I have a Voron 2.4 and I'm also using Stealth Burner, so I'm going to be attaching this to the back of Stealth Burner. And due to clearance issues and a hope that I could uh, lighten the load on my gantry, 
I had decided uh, to remove the cable chains. And one of the first pieces for that is then the relocation of the X and Y end stop switches. So here you can see the X end stop switch. It's mounted to the stealth burner carriage. The wire a little bit unelegantly wraps around through this entryway, up through the center, and then up and out through the stealth burner cover so it can easily reach behind um, where the stepper motor is. And here you can see the wire uh, coming out uh, the top of the stealth burner and again the path through. Um, it's not elegant but it worked and it keeps the wire out of the way so I'm happy enough with it at the moment. Uh, here you can see where I took off the cable chains off the gantry, uh, which means I'm also going to take this uh, cover off as well, which was uh, the guide or the protector for the cables. Uh, I won't need it anymore. And I'm also taking off the cable chain mount on Stealth Burner. That's not needed anymore either. And here you can see where I attached the uh, brass spacers, uh, which is where we will mount uh, the card to. Um, there's two of them here. I had to replace the screws that were here, if I remember correctly. And so I actually had to partially disassemble Stealth Burner to get the bolts in that were a little bit longer that can accommodate these. Here you can see a close-up. And I 3D printed this. Um, I have the link up above. I've got heat set inserts as well. And this is what I'll be mounting the EBB362. And again, the link is up in the notes. Um, fair warning, I ended up replacing this later uh, with a different one that I found that suited my setup better. And uh, again, the link for that is up above. Since I was pulling all the cables off the gantry, I also decided to relocate the Y end stop as well, and uh, which should keep everything really nice and clean. And the way I did that, I 3D printed this mount, and I've got the link above um, that you can go in and take a look if you want to do this yourself. Um, and I've attached the uh, the micro switch that I normally might have used for the Y end stop in the traditional position on a Voron. And here I've got the cable running out of it. Um, it's simply going to run out through here and then wrap under uh, and connect through the Z cable chain, which I will actually still keep on the printer. It's only the X and Y cable chains that I've removed. To mount the umbil umbilical cord, I 3D printed this part with the four heat set inserts and it's going to mount um, in the back there on the AV joint right next to the new Y end stop that I installed. Um, all of these parts, by the way, bolt into pre-existing holes that were used for uh, the previous cable guides. And uh, this will mount, and then there'll be another piece attached to the front of it that will hold the umbilical. So I'm cutting this piece of plastic out. I probably should have fed the cable through it initially before installing it, but I didn't do that. And I don't want to go back and disconnect my wiring just so I can fish it through here. It just wasn't worth the effort. So here I am using my side cutters, and I'm just cutting out the piece of plastic so I can fit the cabling in. Um, the face is going to bolt on here with four bolts. I really don't need this plastic here anyway. 
Also, I'll post a link to the original creator of this mount, uh, who also created it to install on an umbilical, uh, but he used real, I guess, umbilical cable uh, instead of what I'm doing here. And because mine only needs to support six millimeters, I remodif or I modified the part so this hole now is only six millimeters big. And because I had a little more space, I moved or changed the positioning of the heat set inserts and these bolts for the cover as well. And these will be linked to my GitHub where I'll have the STL in case you choose to use these. And here's self burner with the wiring complete, the umbilical plugged in. I've got the tie wrap tightened. I just need to trim it here. Uh, I'm terrible at wiring. <laughs> I'm the first to admit it. So for those of you that thinks this looks terrible, I agree. So testing this gantry by hand, moving all the way back to the Y limit switch, I still have clearance problems uh, in terms of the cable uh, touching different aspects of what's back here, and especially the rear extra wide Z cable chain. And um, as you can also see, the umbilical cord is twisted in an interesting way where the single tie wrap doesn't really suffice. Uh, so I still have some work to do here, and it took me a bit of time. Um, one of them, of course, is, and the STL exist. I've had to change that so it has a thinner front face. Uh, I have also inset the screws. And, um, and well, I've done some creative things with the Z chain as well, too. And I will show you those next. So with these changes, there's some old hardware that we get to get rid of, which is kind of nice and kind of sad at the same time. <laughs> um, but it should save a little bit of weight, um, especially I'm going to be replacing these with shorter screws. I doubt it's going to be noticeable, uh, but this XY end stop pod is now gone, which is really kind of nice because now both sides of the gantry match each other. But again, it's a pity I won't be using this. And the other item that gets to go is the old cable chain mount. And also to replace this, I've got to insert some slightly shorter screws or shorter bolts. One other thing I did was take out the old Z chain, which is extra wide. I had all this extra XY chain, which is narrower, so I used it to replace the wider chain to give me a little bit of clearance. I highly recommend it. So after all of this, as you can imagine, we've got changes in the printer.cfg file. So start by opening the printer.cfg file 
And uh, taking a look here at the top, my MCU is just fine. But looking uh, at my lines underneath that, where I've got my uh, input shaper and the RP at Raspberry Pi as an MCU, I've got those commented out. Um, in fact, anything going on with resonance testing here, I've got completely turned off. Uh, we won't be using it anymore. And besides, the EBB36 has an accelerometer built into it, which is really kind of nice. So whenever you need it, it's there. Uh, however, we now have to declare the MCU, which I called CAN0, which is the CAN bus card. And here we copied the UUID that we got from the scripts that we ran earlier. Um, in addition, here you see I'm redefining the ADXL345. And what's important here is take a look at the um, new nomenclature <laughs> uh, for CS pin. Um, CS pin colon, instead of just a pin number now, also has uh, CAN0, which is the MCU, and then the pins on the UBB36 that are used. And so basically, it's the type of pin, and now we're going to the MCU, where we want to access that pin, and the pin on the MCU. And this is going to have to change throughout. Anywhere there's anything that is now connected, this is what we're doing, as you can see here, with the other pins. And in addition, everywhere in this file, I've gone in and I'm using uh, the facetic spider. So I've commented those lines out. Again, anything that's connected to the EBB36 or where the EBB36 replaces it. And here, now that I've set that up, I've set up a new resonance uh, testing section. And um, also, um, it just, uh, my RGB for the stealth burner, actually, I don't have configured properly. It's not working, so I ignore that. But now that we've got those others set up, scroll down and the extruder itself, obviously, because it's directly connected. And uh, see here where I've set the step pin, uh, the direction pin, the enable pin, and I've commented out the old pins from my spider. And uh, we simply go through this entire file doing this all the way. And again, following that exact same pattern, the type of pin like we would have had previously, but now directing it go to CAN0, which is the new MCU for these pins, and then the pins that reside or that are being used on that MCU for this device. And so here's for uh, the heater pin, um, the same thing for the sensor pin, and of course where i've commented out everything for the spider and uh, we just keep go doing this as we move through the file i'm posting this file in my github and i will have a link to it as well and again same thing. Um, this is for the probe. Uh, the X, Y, and Z locations, you're going to have to check this. Um, here's the heater end and also the hot end fan, um, or the uh, hot end fan and the parts fan. And I made some adjustments here as well. And scrolling all the way down to the bottom. So to get the temperature to appear on the chart in fluid or mainsail, I've added this here. And so now, in addition to the temperature of the spider, I can get the temperature of this as well as the pi, all of them on the same chart which is really kind of nice. And again, just check these home positions. Um, right now, we're not going to do anything, but once we're done and we hit save and restart, 
Um, I've got a couple other steps we've got to do just for safety's sake. The macros themselves don't need to change and they don't really need to change in any of the other files, although there's a chance they might if they reference a specific location and you had to change locations or possibly readjust the bed. And so here we hit save and restart. And then the very next thing I recommend you do, actually it's a must, go back to the startup instructions for your printer. In this case, it's Voron. And uh, I actually had to go through and make some adjustments because I actually did have to shift the bed plate a little bit. But then again, we've completely reconnected the motors and sensors and everything else. And you want to step through this part by part just to make sure uh, something hasn't changed out of whack or maybe, you know, uh, the X probe, the Y probe or your, um, if you have auto Z installed or uh, the Z end stop, uh, if for whatever reason, maybe any of them are not working because half of them were reconnected, possibly repositioned. Again, you really need to check these. I made the mistake and didn't and got a pretty bad crash in terms of the head smacking into the bed, but simply go through this page from top to bottom just to be safe. I actually had to make some changes, so please do it. So how does it look when it's all connected? Uh, here's fluid. If you use mainsail, it should look the same. Um, here I've got all my regular temperatures, including the spider and the pie. Um, I've got my bed top and uh, again, the standard things. But if you look down at the bottom, I've also got the temperature of the EBB36 MCU, which is really kind of cool. And that's based on the changes we just made. So this concludes this video. Um, if you look closely on this video, you might notice some other changes as well too. Um, I'm going to create a follow-up, much, much shorter video on other things that I've learned during this uh, build, or I guess I should say rebuild or retrofit. Um, this, I've, I've my Voron is working and it's working well. I'm really happy with the results and the umbilical cord is great, although there are a couple things I think I change. Uh, in my next follow-up video, and again, I promise it'll be shorter, uh, I will go through some of the things that I've either changed, modified, or improved uh, since installing this initially. I've learned a lot and this project was a lot more involved than I thought it would be. And unfortunately, it was also one of those situations where just everything or anything that could have gone wrong did, which I guess means, again, it's been a great learning experience. But if you've gotten any use out of this video, uh, if you're finding any of this useful, uh, please subscribe, please comment below, and uh, all the links are posted or are being posted of any of the changes that I made to my configuration files or uh, any custom STL that I've created or anything of the kind. And um, I just want to thank you very much for watching.